I started my practice really with a pediatric orientation, but having been in practice for over 30 years now, I've been able to evolve with my patients. I approach the conditions we see in children a little bit differently from adults because how we approach that in children can really greatly impact their learning for the rest of their lives. So we can have an early impact in making sure they get the best vision, not only seeing 2020, but their perception of their world. We talk about children with visually related learning problems. There are a lot of kids that have 2020 vision that still have problems coordinating how well their eye moves together, how well they focus from one distance to another, uh, that may have problems with their prescription increasing a lot every year. We take that very seriously and address that because we want to positively impact that child's life. And as they move through school, we want to make sure we optimize their learning, make sure it's easiest for them to learn because the eyes account for 90% of the learning in a child. So it's very, very important that they function visually very efficiently. And as we move through life, we want to make sure that the vision function is there, but then we start connecting the eye health conditions. So medical eye problems are less frequent in children Although they're there, things like draw eye because they're on computers and laptops and their cell phones a lot more. But as we move through life, we connect the dots. We're looking at your medical history, connecting the dots to hypertension, diabetes, glaucoma. And then we're connecting the dots with your overall lifestyle. The newer technologies that are available now are things like different eye drops and contact lenses that help our children that are getting more and more nearsighted every year to reduce that change, to slow that change down or stabilize it. And that's in the area of myopia management. I'm excited about that because now we can do something about children whose eyes are getting worse every year. On the other end, some of the newer technologies that we have for people living with diabetes and hypertension that are gonna be coming more of the standard of care in measuring that electrical signal in the back of the eyes to see if there are any deficits and also look at their risk for developing more serious eye problems from diabetes over the years. So we can monitor these people a little bit more closely so we can talk to them a little bit more about the lifestyle, taking their medications, making sure they're seeing their physician or the endocrinologist a little bit more to help turn that ship. And again, these changes we can even see in people living with pre or borderline diabetes. We also have technologies where it's almost like taking an MRI of the back of the eye. We call it OCT, where we're looking at the back wall of the eyeball and we can see small, small blood vessel changes or hemorrhages. We can see changes or thinning of the nerve fibers in the back of the eyes before there's any visual changes. We can track those changes very, very early before, years before there's any measurable vision loss. We test color vision at a very detailed level. So people may not feel that they have color blindness or have problems with color vision, but we can pick up very, very subtle changes in color vision that again, can be a sign of early nerve damage, macular degeneration, uh, problems with diabetes and glaucoma. And one last thing, we do, do what's called dark adaptometry, where we can actually measure how well people's vision recovers from a bright light, how well you see at night. So if you have a deficit uh, seeing at night or in dim light, we can measure that. And again, that is cutting edge technology that we have now that can detect macular degeneration at a very, very early stage and implement changes in nutrition or even nutritional supplements to help slow that process down. Optometrists play a very important and critical role in our public health system. Just imagine if you don't have good vision, it makes it difficult to function on your job. It makes it difficult living a productive life. Things like not being able to drive or, or being able to work on a computer. There are new technologies in helping people that are visually impaired because there are gonna be some times in certain parts of our population that are visually impaired. And many times an eye doctor will say, well, I can't help your vision anymore with glasses. I can't help your vision anymore with contact lenses. Well, guess what? There's technologies out there a subspecialty called low vision rehabilitation that can help give people technology. It can be simple as an app on your phone or different ma special magnifying lenses that can help people with vision impairment 
live a better and productive life. So vision impairment doesn't mean that's the end of your productivity. We want to reduce vision impairment, but you can still live a very full life with a vision impairment by seeing a low vision specialist. One of the most misunderstood aspects about eye health is the perception that because you see well, because you have no perceived visual problems, that your eyes are in good condition. And that cannot be further from the truth. We put our patients in a position where we can detect early issues and risk in their eye health to their sight. You don't want to wait till you can't see before you get your eyes checked. A lot of times in the black community, we think eye care is analogous to who has the best sale on glasses? Where can I get the best deal on glasses? But it's so very important to connect the dots between your eye health to your overall health and not just getting an inexpensive pair of glasses. A lot of people that have LASIK have had LASIK or laser surgery on the eyes to reduce their nearsightedness. Sometimes they fall off the cliff in terms of getting regular eye checkups because they forget that those regular eye health checkups were so very, very important in spite of the fact that now they've had LASIK surgery and they can see great. But that doesn't eliminate your risk from family history, uh, of diabetes, hypertension, or living with those conditions that can really put your eyesight at risk, even though you see quite well. I am excited about talking to young people about having a career in optometry. It's a tremendous opportunity. African Americans only make up about 2% of the total number of optometrists in the United States. That means there's tremendous need, but also tremendous opportunity for young people looking at this as a profession.